Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, just uh, just before we hit 9 a.m. this morning, we have a final conversation for you. And it is talking security, as the House of Reps has summoned President Mohamed Buhari to appear before it uh, with regards to the killings in the country. Uh, most recent one, of course, is the 67, as the numbers have been updated uh, now, uh, farmers who were killed in Burno State. Um, we've invited uh, to share their thoughts with us, uh, Mr. Biodun Shoumi, and uh, once again, Bolahon Olujide. Thank you so much for uh, joining us, uh, uh, both of you. Thanks for your time. It's my pleasure. All right. I'm going to start with uh, Biodun Shoumi. Uh, um, I, I want your thoughts on um, all of this. It, the How relevant you know, is this invitation to the president? If you remember sometime in 2018, he was summoned also after the killings in Bainwe State. Um, of course, that invitation wasn't, he, the president didn't show up. You know, but, but how relevant is this now? Um, how, of what effect will this be? They have also, of course, asked and advised that he sacks the several chiefs in the past, which was also ignored. Um, so why do you think this is relevant in any way? Well, um, in, in the first instance, uh, one should pay condolence, you know, to the families of the bereaved, you know, the poor farmers who were killed, you know, by the criminal bandits, uh, Boko Haram. Um, it's quite unfortunate, it's quite sad that at this time of our history, uh, we are still, you know, losing lives in this way. Um, that much said. The importance of what is being done currently is that we are beginning to see the legislature waking up to their responsibility. While on one part, the duty of the federal government, you know, is to ensure the security of lives and property. But we have continued to witness wanting destruction of lives and properties, despite the claim of the Nigerian army that they've degraded the capacity of Boko Haram. But the killings are not stopped. So it's inevitable that the national uh, legislature that is the Senate and the House of Reps at a point will have to raise issues with the president. Well, Don't forget that this parliament is deemed, that is the National Assembly is deemed to be a very pliant one to the interest of the executive. So I think it's significant that not only the first time, now for the second time, they're asking the president to come and account um, for his stewardship. I, on I, I want to, uh, just a follow up, um, Felicity is going to come in in a bit. I, uh, just a follow up. W one thing that, you know, we also brought up earlier, and this is, is something that also confuses me with all of this is will the House of Representatives have summoned the president if it was five people that were killed? Because oh, in the last couple of weeks and months, we've heard of seven, five, two, ten. Um, which were ignored by the House of Representatives. So is it because the numbers now are staggering that it becomes important that they make this move? Or is this, you know, because this might as well be plain to the gallery. If they didn't do it when it was 12 victims, you know, why? what makes it important now that it's 47 or 43? Yeah, we, we should not lose sight of one thing. Year on year on year on basis, the... Uh, as of reps, the Senate have always been increasing the budget for the defense sector. Yet more people are getting killed, and that is totally unacceptable. We have heard of um, the deliveries of Tucano fighter jets from the United States of America. You know, if the killings continue on relentless, you know, relentlessly, they are bound to ask questions. What is the efficacy, you know, of the weapons purchased? And don't forget, we against the background of what um, the commandant of uh, Lafayette Doyle, Major General Adeni, you know, who has just recently been punished for coming out to say that, look, his soldiers were poorly equipped. Do not forget the testimony of Ndume, Ali Ndume, a senator who stated clearly, you know, on the floors of the Senate, that soldiers were rationing weapons, that is, they were sharing weapons and uh, bullets, and that he had not seen a single new AK-47. So at what stage will people begin to ask questions, what are the billions and billions being budgeted for defense, you know, being spent on? You know, I think that is a critical period, which uh, point which the uh, House of Reps have got into and said, look, we need to ask questions, even if 
the chief of army staff or chief of defense staff are not able to explain this the president must be in a position to explain it because we've been right. approving budgets for them all right let, let's bring in uh, mr Bolaho. um earlier when we talked on, uh, about this uh, during off the press uh, you expressed hope uh, that president buhari will honor the invitation of the house of reps members um uh, what do you say to those who um are of the opinion that it's of no importance whether he appears uh, before the house of representatives or not because at the end of the day all he's going to provide for the country is talking points that's on the one hand on the other hand, I, I want to ask your thoughts on Debbie Miller's position that the president coming to speak to uh, the assembly would be to divulge some of the top um, uh, security, um, um, you know, um, information, information yeah, that they need to use that might not be and uh, that might be counterproductive to the fight against insecurity in this country. So the question is in two parts. Uh, well, um, definitely the president will not disclose on the floor of, of, uh, of the National Assembly security information that are sensitive. But there are other questions that are not exactly as sensitive as um, the military secrets. Strategy. Like uh, 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 Mr. Shoumi has just said, look, we are approving budgets, but we're not seeing results. Is it not fair enough that we ask the person who is the chief, that uh, the commander in chief of the Air Forces? I think it's a fair thing to do. And I think it's also an opportunity for us to ask several other questions that bothers, that bothers us, as, as, several that bother us as, as, as a people, as far as defense is concerned. One of his own key deliverables, which he campaigned on, is security. I remember he particularly called this insurgents cowards. And it seems as if we had some traction at some point, but somehow we have lost it. It is fair enough that it should be put in the, in the assembly and let the representative of the people who voted for him and put him in that place ask him some questions about our security. Um, well, I'll, um, there, I'll stay with you. To right, go ahead. There, there's go ahead. a second part uh, to that question. The um, skepticism that whether he appears or not, uh, it's not going to make much difference because all he will provide for the country uh, are talking points. I, I don't think so. I think it makes a difference. Here from, you see, the fact is that all the bots stop on the president's table. So when that kind of a person comes out to speak and is, is put, I mean, we have all watched sessions with, uh, say, President of, uh, of, of the, I mean, the Prime Minister of the UK in the, in the, in the assembly, when he's being questioned. And they, they tend to throw a lot of light onto what is going on. It is that kind of expectation that I believe we should bring to the table. Let there be, the, the question should be, well, and ask him directly. Then when he says those things, on the floor of, 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 of the National Assembly, um, it, I think it carries more weight than what we get to hear from presidential spokesman. All right. Well, I'm going to stay with you on this one. Um, maybe Biodu can also chip in if, he, um, if there's time for it. In 2015, the vice president, current vice president, uh, Professor Emil Shimbajo, was quoted as saying that a failure to guarantee security um, in the country is an impeachable um, offense, or it, it's impeachable, basically. Um, do you think, you know, he still agrees with those thoughts? And do you think maybe that the National Assembly should also see things that way, um, regardless of the president showing up or, or not? Um, whether he shows up or not, uh, what constitutes impeachable uh, offenses, I believe, are, are fairly well defined. And the process, which is the more important part, for arriving at an impeachment is also clearly defined in the statute. It's a pretty tough process to achieve. But at, at, for whatever it is, well, if the president um, did not show up at the National Assembly to speak to this urgent matter, it would actually be nice um, to see the National Assembly, Assembly consider what Oshibajo said and said, oh, 
Has he committed an impeachable offense by not coming to explain to us what is happening? And if there's an impeachable offense, for crying out loud, there's nothing stopping us from initiating one. Is, 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 is the views of the vice president then were failure to provide security for citizens. Um, do you think that the National Assembly should go ahead and start to consider that the government has failed to provide security for citizens and maybe um, should consider Im impeachment as an option? You need to listen to the president first. That would be the fair thing to do. All right. All right. I, I, oh, the same question to the other show me you may want to you know share your thoughts on that also yeah is it, it um, what do you want me to specifically address I'm, I'm i'm quoting the vice president you know who okay. in 2015 had already you know made statements um, i'm going to read a uh, thing from the vanguard i'll quickly just share uh, from the vanguard it says the president's inability to guarantee security is an impeachable offense um, he said that in 2015, uh, of course, regarding or referring to the former government of uh, Good Luck Abella Jonathan. Um, so I, I don't know if you would, you know, suggest that he still shares the same sentiments today and what the National Assembly should maybe be seeing the current government's actions and, you know, inactions are um, like um, with regards to impeachment. Yeah. When you look at what the vice president said, he spoke as a professor of law and the vice president of Nigeria. He knew the position of the law. The primary duty of government is the protection of life and properties. And where a government failed to do that, the leadership has to be called you know, to answer for it, whether through impeachment or whether being summoned to the National Assembly. Uh, it depends on the situation. What I think we should all bear in mind is the complexities of the problems we are faced with. One is we are faced with insurgency. We do not have great experience in dealing with insurgency. Yes, we do have rich experience in dealing with conventional warfare, both at home and abroad, but we do not have that. And because insurgency can mutate in different forms, you know, from attack on building lives to economic investments of the country, it makes it more difficult. I think the primary issue should be whether the president is dealing with the problem. One, alleged corruptions in the military in terms of armed procurement, the welfare of soldiers, whether they are being taken properly care of. We've seen so many social media footages of soldiers complaining that they were not being properly fed. In some cases, they do not even ask access to clean water, you know, enough for them to drink. So these are issues that affect morale. What about the welfare of the soldiers in terms of their remuneration when they are on war front? What are we doing about it? What about the conditions in which their family lives? What about compensation, adequate compensation for soldiers in the event of death? because we are sending them to work front and they can easily get killed. You know, these are basic major issues that we need to address. The president needs to explain what he intends to do on all this. Um, given the complexities, I don't necessarily think even impeaching the president will solve the problem. Bring another person, if you don't have the right tools, if he has to work with the same military which we have, then we are still in a problem. The military as an institution needs to be reformed. Talking about, talking about military reforms, the conversation has moved back to the service chiefs. The Senate is asking that they be disengaged with immediate effect. Um, what's your thinking as to why the president retains this men in spite of clamor for their removal? And what, what is the argument from others that they are uh, very experienced, so they should stay uh, on as service chiefs? How do you marry the two? Yes, um, depending on how you look at it, I personally don't think we have taken an holistic view of that situation in relation to service chiefs. We normally focus on the Nigerian Army Chief of Staff, on the Chief of Defense Staff, Air Force, and Navy. But we forget the role of the Defense Intelligence Agency in all this. Because the war has to be intelligence driven, which is, uh, we have hardly seen the result of that. Because most of the weapons are coming from abroad. What is the Defense Intelligence Agency doing about that? 
have we been able to stop you know the proliferation of weapons and access to weapons you know through west african territories you know we've not seen much being said about the defense intelligence agency the full soldiers alone cannot do it without the required um, level of intelligence what we probably need to think about is about how to rebuild a mobile nigerian police uh, a mobile nigerian military that can respond as short as possible and better motivated than what we have currently all right um well on i think you may want to also take that same question um as far as uh, i mean in my opinion uh, everything rises and fall on leadership if you get the leadership wrong, a lot of things will also go wrong. And if leadership is not delivering on the mandates, even if um, the person that hires them does not want to remove them, I think uh, there is honor in being able to walk away from, from those, those kind of uh, positions. I do not believe for one moment that the issue of uh, leadership of the military, there is only one man that can do it. And if that one man is not there, nothing will happen. I don't believe in that. There are people, it's supposed to be an institution. And if, you, if there's an institution that does not have a proper succession plan, that in itself is a sign of failure. So if the gentlemen who are the leaders of this uh, 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 the military are already of retirement age, the performance has not been there, irrespective of what is making the performance not to be there. Can we have a change? Because we have continued to do the same thing the same way, and we are expecting a different result. A different result might not come um, in this time. I, I want to, okay. Sorry, I, I, something, you know, that, um, you know, Bola, I want you to speak on, you know, and I feel it's one of the things that the, the House of Reps National Assembly might also uh, consider um, as the reason for someone in the president's asides, you know, finding out about how, mu how much money has been approved and what it has been used for over uh, the years. The capacity of the president himself to um, handle these issues. Yes, I know that it's okay to, you know, uh, appoint people and, uh, you know, give them, of course, uh, delegate uh, certain positions to them. But should the National Assembly be questioning the capacity of the president himself at a time like this to actually fight insurgency? Uh, well, the, the president is, is a retired soldier, uh, probably one of the very few who happen to have commanded virtually all the divisions uh, in, in, in the Nigerian army. And um, he, he retired as a general. So when we talk about experience, I think we can give it to him as a previous uh, um, soldier, as a you know, retired soldier. However, you see why it is important that the president comes to that assembly? Is that he will also help us to gauge this capacity issue you are talking about. The way he will address important questions regarding where we are in terms of security will tell us, it will tell a lot about the, the, the capacity um, that exists in at, at, at that level. All right, and if uh, we're Mr. not satisfied with I'm that, sorry to then um, interject. We, we can begin to think of what is the, what is the other question. Why. But as a first step, let's listen to him. All right. Um, just to move slightly away from the president and leadership to the relatives and victims of the um, insecurity, let's take the killing of the 43, now over 60 farmers in Boronu State. What actions do you expect? Because the focus seemed to be all on uh, the president appearing before the Senate, the condemnation and all of that. What about the welfare of the victims of this uh, killing? Killings. How will they cope, especially if the people killed were the bread uh, winners of these uh, families? So what should government be saying in regards to their welfare? If you can do that in 40 seconds so we can have uh, Mr. Um, Biodo Shoumi speak on it as well. 
Okay, the, the, the government has uh, a ministry that is dedicated to things like this. You have a humanitarian affairs uh, ministry. Uh, there is also the Northeast Development Commission, uh, who I believe who also mobilized to support whatever is going on um, at the, that, that access um, to ensure that people can get a little bit of comfort. There will be a lot of displacement as well. Uh, people are going to leave that area. They need to have a place to stay. They, there are children issues who need to go to school or be able to pick the pieces of their lives all again. So the humanitarian ministry has a huge role to play. Okay. Over to you, Mr. Shawumi, in yes, 40 I, seconds as well. Yes, yes. I think... Um, it's very important that government should step in with all the agencies. And I'm not saying the federal government alone, the state government. The challenge I think they are faced with is, how do you deliver aid supplies, you know, in a war front to a people besieged, you know, by insurgents? Uh, most of the cities in the northern parts are safe. It's only in the rural area. So it's right, the very poor people in the north that are suffering you know, the brunt of this um, insurgency. But government needs to act expeditiously in terms of providing relief for the families of the victims. All right, thank All you right. very much, gentlemen, for joining us on The Breakfast this morning My and pleasure. talking about this rather sensitive uh, conversation around security. Thank you again. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Always a okay. pleasure. Um, I, I would, um, we're out of time, but I will wrap up, you know, you know by... Um, saying that, uh, you know, I believe there's a lot, of, there's too many questions to be asked. Um, I feel like we've, you know, dragged our feet for so long. I feel like, you know, a lot of people um, know exactly the, made the right things to do, but they wouldn't do them because there's no political will to do them. Corruption also has been, I feel it's also one of the biggest problems that we're suffering from right now. Billions and billions and billions of Naira have been invested in security since this insurgency started, even pre and prior to the insurgency. There's no auditing every year on what happens to all those funds. There's no auditing to the money that we spend on buying ammunition. There's no auditing into anything, or we don't get to see any of all these things. And if these questions are not asked and we find out what exactly is going on, we'll continue to dance this dance in the market, naked in the market. Well, it is well, embarrassing, the, the completely will, embarrassing. The, the questions will continue, at least here on Plus TV Africa, we'll continue to ask the questions and get opinion on how we can move forward. It is now left for those in the leadership position to queuing and take some of these suggestions and find how they can implement it and use it for the betterment. It's our, if we die together, we live together. It's as simple as that. We don't have any other country other than Nigeria. So it must be a collective effort to move us out from insecurity and inch. Let's see that we are inching, not one step forward, 20 steps back. Uh, that's uh, about it for the conversation today. I expect we'll continue to talk about it in the coming days. Um, but just before we go, I want to quickly um, do a uh, a correction um, earlier when we we're talking about the um, International Day for the Abolition of Slavery. I mentioned that um, uh, NAPTIP had an MD. Actually, it's a director uh, <laughs> general. Yes, it's, it's a, a director general, not a, a managing a director. I need to make that clarification. You know, sometimes in the in the in the spirit of talking, you just get in carried away. Here. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.